All right. See, it's a great way to waste those four extra minutes they gave me. Well, thank you guys for having me and I'm really excited to be um, talking. Yes, that is exactly right, Kim. This is COVID hair. I have not got a haircut in so long. And yes, I am actually on Mountain Dew right now because I'm tired and I wanted to be awake and excited. So it helps. It really does help. All right. Well, I'm excited to be here. I'm really sad I didn't actually get to travel to Europe to do this talk. That would have been way more fun than instead of doing this in my office. But no big deal. It's how it is. All right. Um, so just a little bit about my presentation style. I'm not a slides guy. I don't like slides. I have an intro slide that has my name and stuff on it, but I'm probably not even going to use it. I might do it as the outro one. I'm paying attention to chat to the best of my ability. Please ask questions. Feel free at any point to ask what's going on and ask for clarification. I saw a question already like, when will Xamarin support Blend? Probably never. I'm sorry. Probably never. Just how it is. So I'll be as honest as I can and answer as many questions as possible. My glowing Death Star is awesome. I love it. Thank you for noticing. Um, Yes, I'm going to reorganize my office. But I'm going to make sure that my Death Star stays in camera. So, yes, it is awesome. All right. So, today I'm going to be talking about Maui, the topic everyone wants to talk about. And I can take this as deep as you guys want to go. Ask as many questions as you want. And we'll ex I can explain as much as I can about the architecture and how things work, why um, I think the why is the important part. So I want to cover why as much as possible. So feel free to ask that. If I didn't answer it well enough, say why, and I'll dig in more. So just to get started, um, my name is James Clancy. I probably should have started with that. Um, MAUI is an acronym. It is for multi-application user interface. I can never remember. Um, but yeah. Um, Maui will support XAML, absolutely. And when can we do custom controls with Figma? I actually have a branch of comment that shows custom controls in Figma. And we can look at some of that today because some of that type of things are some of the advent or benefits to doing Maui. So super exciting. Um, all right. So let's talk a tad bit. Um, sorry, I was, but I was originally saying who I am. I should have actually started that way. I'm James Clancy. I am a PM architect at Microsoft. And I've been with Xamarin since 2011 is when I joined the company. And Joe, of course, joined Microsoft through the acquisition. Um, I am one of the original authors of Xamarin Forms. I have done lots of random things at Xamarin and worked on pretty much every part of the product. So um, I can try and answer questions. Um, so let's start by Xamarin Forms, just to do a little bit of the groundwork really quick to explain what Maui is and why, because we're already getting questions about that in chat. So let's talk Xamarin Forms architecture. Right now, the Xamarin Forms library has um, is the Xamarin Forms core library. It's the one that you write against. It's the one that you do your XAML against. It has buttons, labels, pages, all the things like that you're used to. And it uses an MVVM pattern. On top of that, you have the Xamarin platforms layers, which are like Xamarin or that uh, Xamarinforms.ios, Xamarinforms.android.wpf, dot whatever, right? Those bring in this platform specific code, like how to present a button on those platforms. And right now, there's a the way that um, the inheritance is, is there's the core layer, Xamarin Forms, which has the buttons and things like that. XAML depends on that. And then on top of that, there's the platform layers that depends on core. Maui is a brand new architecture. Now, the big thing is we're not moving, we're not really breaking a lot of things for you. Our goal is to break as little things as possible for you while doing this new architecture. So with the new you might, I mean, all you're really going to have to do right now, the goal is to make it to where all you have to do is change a couple namespaces and your apps should compile. We should be able to write a script that'll do it for you. But there's a lot of big changes coming in Maui. The biggest one is right now we have Xamarin Core, um, the core library, the Xamarin Forms Core, which is the root library. And then the renderers are on top of that. With the new architecture, we're flipping that. It's complete turnaround. Xamarin forms is going to be a new layer, the new Maui layer will 
yes, I will show code and show architecture. I'm just trying to explain it a little bit first. So forms in its current form is going to be renamed Maui. That's the plan. And but think about, I'm just going to call it forms for now, right? Because that's what you're used to. Your MVVM layer, we're just going to call that forms for the duration of the stock. So you're keeping your MVVM, you're keeping your SAML. If we rename it to Maui, it is what it is. But let's just go with that. So that's the forms layer. Now what we're going to do, though, is forms is going to now depend on Maui core. Now, let me share my screen. And oops, sorry, I did not mean to bang my mic. Sorry if that was loud and obnoxious. Let's jump over to an, a Maui sample. Now, this is all early, early stuff. The project structure is going to be even simpler. We're still waiting on .NET features from to make this better. So that way, our project structure is better. So your project structure will be better. But this has eventually inside of this Maui, this Maui core, um, this is the root. It has everything in it. It will have renderers. And actually, we have changed our mind. And yeah, I don't know if, yeah, someone could move the logo. I don't know. I can try moving things around. Scroll, scroll. Oops, wrong hotkey. I can make things bigger. All right. Hey, thanks for removing the logo. Awesome. Really nice. All right. So we have this Maui core library. You'll notice this is, this is all early prototype stuff. This is not the exact solution. If you actually want to see the exact solution come into play, I will sh I'll put some URLs in here. We'll actually look at some pull requests that are making this happen now, which is pretty exciting. The pull requests are already starting. All right. So inside of Maui core, you'll notice right now there's renderers. We've already changed our mind and we're calling these handlers. So the new things are called handlers. Handlers is better anyway. All right. Now you'll notice in here, we have, oops, let me expand this out. And for in here, for a button, we have three different files. So this is the root project now. The button renderers are what Xamarin Forms buttons are going to depend on, which is kind of crazy and kind of weird. But it allows a lot of new things, a lot of new things. Because of this, you can now you shouldn't have to create custom renderers. I am pretty sure that unless you're um, a control vendor and you're building custom, really crazy custom controls and graphs and charts or all the awesome Telerik controls, if you're not Telerik, you're probably not going to be building custom renderers. That is the most exciting thing about the new architecture. Custom renderers hopefully are a thing of the past. And I'll show you why. So we have this new button renderer layer, this or this new renderer layer. Like I said, we've already renamed it to handlers. If we look at a pull request, this is a current pull request for slider handlers. If we look at our slider handlers, handler, if we actually go to the handle, this is a real pull request, which is in right now. Yes, I will zoom in my code when I go back. So. Um, but so yes, they're renamed handlers now, which I'm really excited about. Um, but let's look at what these handlers have. These handlers have this property mapper in it. And let me, is my code still too small? I can make it big. We can go big, go big or go home. I'm already home. So we're going big. All right. So renderers or handlers, sorry, I'm going to call them handlers because that's their new name, even though my codes in front of me says renderers, ignore that. Handlers. So handlers have this mapper concept. Mappers are awesome. So how a button does its thing and how properties work are all based on mappers. If you look at old Xamarin form code, old Xamarin forms code, you have that. Um, we actually probably have some in here. Let's look at, let's find a renderer. Hit enter enough, we'll find it. All right, so the old renderers, there's this, no, come on, you're not gonna show me that? Hmm, he's not showing it to me. I was really hoping, let's just open this file. Um, let's view file. So inside of a renderer, renderers have 
this big on element changed, they go through and they set all these things. And then they call all these update maximum, update minimum, update value, update slider colors, update tap gesture recognizers. Now, whenever a value changes, guess what we do? We have this whole little switch statement. So we're doing the same thing twice. Because when you first set it up, you need to call all these. When the properties change, and guess what? We have to call those again. So this new thing we have, the mapper, takes care of this for us. So if you have a mapper and you say, when this property text changes, call this function. This function is not platform specific. Notice it's all interfaces. So awesome. This knows nothing about forms. This just knows you have a button and you have a renderer. Okay. So now that you have a button and a renderer, what it's going to do is when you first set the element or it does that initial of tying a renderer to an element, it's going to go ahead and call everything in there. Because guess what? You need to. And now when any of those things change, it's going to call those as well. Now, this makes a lot of sense, especially if you want to do something custom. How in the world do you inject into this if you want to do something custom? You want it to call a property for you on your control when it's initialized or the element set. You have to come in subclass renderers, register them, do all that nonsense. Well, I have this new this little test project going on. I can go into a sample. Granted, this sample stuff is going to collapse down to be one project. We just don't have the work done yet to do that, but that's what's going to happen. Um, yes, it's dependency injectionist. You'll get some feelings of that, except nothing is magical. It's all explicit. So that's one thing I really like about it is it's very explicit how it works. So if I go into this My App, I can jump into here and I can mess with this thing. Right. So right now I have a button that's going to happen. What I can do is I can call button handler, not renderer, handler, but it'll probably be button handler dot mapper. We'll figure it out. And now in here I can say my awesome property. All right. My awesome property. And if that thing's a bindable property, you're automatically going to um, renderer view. Now, console dot right line. Uh, do we not have system? All right, let me do hotkeys. Actually, I don't have keycaster on. I'm going to do this in case I code. That way you guys can see my hotkeys. I just got to do some funky things to get it in a good spot. That looks good. So you can see my hotkeys. I like learning people's hotkeys. All right, so we can do a right line in here. And now, hey guys, this works without a custom renderer. All right, now this method is gonna get called one time and one time only. The reason is we haven't hooked this up to a, up to, um, a bindable property or anything like that. Because if you do a bindable property, whenever that update fires, it's gonna fire that as well. Um, yes, Keycaster is free and it's great. But guess what? I now just got this thing, this method that's sent and it's gonna pass me in the renderer. And if we look at this renderer, it's our button renderer. And this view is a Xamarin Forms button. Yes, it's of the type of that interface, but look, this is a Xamarin Forms button. It has every property you're expecting, all of them. And so now I'm given the native view, which is on this renderer. So I get this renderer and come on debugger, show me the properties. There we go. All right, I can go into this and I can go to the native view and even to go to the typed native view, and it's going to be a UI button. I have the UI button, and I have the view right there in shared code. All right. If that's not exciting, I don't know what is. Now, on top of that, let's say you don't like how we handle something. In this case, in the old form stuff, how would you ever change update maximum or update value? What if you want to do some funky math in there for the update value or the slide colors? You want to inject in and do awesome gradients because that's how you roll and your app is full of gradients. What you can do 
button renderer dot button mapper. Now do name of but um I button dot pick out any property you want. Background color. Thank you. I don't want you to set the background color. I want to do it because I'm building debug rainbows and I want to randomly pick a color for every single button. Do you see how much easier this would be to write a library like that? I just injected it at the renderer level. In my shared code library, this is not iOS app, guys. You'll notice net standard, iOS, Xamarin, I can switch between those. This lets you inject in without doing anything funky. And I can do if iOS or .NET standard or whatever. And if I'm in, let's switch this to iOS. Um, let's go to if iOS. Let me do that again. Now I get, now you'll notice I'm getting all my iOS completions. And if I can say var button equals v, um, sorry, um, we'll want to do r dot native view as UI button. And I can even bring in UI kit. Actually, I spelled UI kit wrong. Let's try that again. UI kit button. So now, at that point, I have a native button. I can do whatever I want with it. I can set background color to an image because we don't support images. But guess what? I do. And I know that that interface, I can even do a check if if I have my own button type. I can do if, or I'll just do var my button equals V as my awesome button, because I created my own subclass of button, I now have that type. And I can say, if button is, if my button is not equal to null, do that. And then I can grab off any properties I want. And I can set things based off those properties. So you're now instantly unlocked. And you can do anything you want to the native layer without doing a custom renderer. No more, every time I have to render or register a custom renderer, I have to think, what's that syntax? Where's that attribute? Another benefit to that is startup time. We all know startup time, especially on Android. Why? Because we're searching for custom attributes and we're finding them to then register them. That's out the window. It's not needed anymore. We don't need it. We don't need to use custom renders in that may. So we're actually getting rid of those attributes as how we register things. We're going to this, you'll see this layer right here where we're injecting, because this prototype didn't have any layouts. So we had our own dummy layout render. So this is the this is the syntax you'll use. And so third-party libraries will have an init handler. So they'll just do like my teller controls dot init or whatever, or any of these third party ones, you have to do that anyway, or else the linker removes those DLLs. So the initialize will do that. Um, <laughs> uh, the bots, the bots are always, always, I'm sorry, the message is deleted. I wish I could see it. I'm sorry. All right. But you can jump, like I said, you can inject in at the native level. And if you need to do a custom renderer, you still can. It's right there. It's a one line. The other benefit of doing this in order, you do it in the order you want, you know the order they're going to be called out. Super awesome. All right. So that's what you guys wanted to see right away was some of the stuff on how some of these are, are very different. Oh, man. Well, you should be able to use lots of exclamation points. Bots shouldn't care about that. All right. So we have a lot of power when it comes to these. And you can easily inject in and do some things. Now, I know I was asked about Figma stuff earlier, right? Let's actually, I'm just going to go crazy here. Let's go, oh, I'm even on the right branch. Hopefully, you guys have all heard of Comet, right? Anyone not heard of Comet? All right, well, let me launch Comet. And I'm hoping no one says no in chat. Let's don't save that. Let's jump into there. So Comet had a lot of inspiration for all this new Maui stuff. Oh, you, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, guys. All right. So Comet is one of my little pet projects. And I will link you guys. Hopefully, I have the power to link. Let me, let me see if I can paste from one computer to the next. 
No, it says I can't. The bot won't let me. Maybe a mod can do it. I know Luce has the URLs. Luce will do it. She's amazing. All right, check it out though. Um, you will notice in here, Comet has the old architecture similar to forms, how one relates in the other one. Um, or the dependency is the same order to where there's the Comet core and then there's the platforms. We've decided to switch those around because Comet is an MVU for C Sharp. It's something you can play with now, and it's what's heavily inspiring what will become Maui.MVU. Um, I'm still working on it, still experimenting with it. It has C Sharp hot reload, which is really fun. Um, but we were asked about Figma stuff. Oh, thanks, Luz. Thanks so much. So we're asked. I was asked about Figma things, right? How are we going to take Figma controls and bring them in? Well, inside of Comet, Comet has handlers. That's why I'm excited about the handler name. Um, so that's where handlers come from. Was actually what we named them Comet, so people didn't confu get confused with um, renderers and the negative connotations of renderers. Um, Yes, this will work on WPF for D or Windows. I don't know. Right now, our target is probably going to do UWP or WinUI. WinUI is what's most likely going to be. Right now, all of this is talking about the future and what's going to happen. And so all these projects are are working about, are working, are going around, and we're all waiting for each other on different dependencies. But that's what it should be. Um, so uh, Microsoft should focus on a modern innovation. So. I completely agree. What we're doing is our goal with Maui, and this talk is on Maui, and Maui, kind of the inner workings of what's happening with .NET Maui. Um, so our goal is to try and break people who are doing their existing XAML and MVVM apps as little as possible, but still enable you to move forward to an MVU style pattern if that's what you so choose. That's another reason why we're doing this big re-architecture to where we're replacing the dependencies and making the handler layer be the root layer. So if we have all these handlers which use interfaces, guess what this means for something like Comet or MVU? I can now build an entirely new UI paradigm that works very differently. It has very different... Um, very different things that work very differently. And if you're looking at how MVU looks, if I look at one of these samples really quick, let's go to a sample. And actually, let's go to a Skia sample, since you guys are asking me about it. But you'll notice things work very, very differently. That's how you declare UI. This is how you declare a list. It's all from C Sharp. And it works very differently because there's a body which returns the view. And so at any point, if something changes, we can reevaluate this body and redo everything. And yes, there will be documentation. Microsoft loves documentation. Um, you can't do UI frameworks without documentation. So absolutely, there will be documentation. So MVU works very differently. And MVU uses different controls. If we look at how, let's look at a clip sample. Check this out. I can just say, hey, image, let's add a clip shape to you. Let's add an overlay. Let's do a shadow. Now, a couple things that are different about this, if we look at a, how things work, and even like with a button, if we're doing a button sample, I say, hey, button, the only properties I have on that, I don't even have properties really. A button. Come on, you can do it, Visual Studio. A button has two properties, only two properties, text and a click. That's it. And they're read only. You can only set them via the constructor. Well, how do you style this thing? All of that happens through Fluent Extensions. So dot, let's do font. And so these things are very simple. and in the end, with Comet, I was rewriting that renderer there and making it into a handler, making handlers, and they were very different. But now, with the new Maui architecture, I can do something that works very differently and base them off those existing handlers. Now, those handlers are going to be shared by Xamarin Forms. They're going to be shared, shared by um, Maui's MVU. 
whatever framework pattern comes in the next five years, next two years, if you have this new idea for an entirely new framework and how you want to design and build apps, you can do that and base it off our renderers. And now it's cross platform and you don't have to deal with all that headache. You don't. And any custom controls that people wrote for that handler layer, like the Telerik controls, are all just going to magically work for you. You'll get them in your toolkit, and they're not going to have to do any work to do it. That's exciting. That is the promise of this. So we can future-proof the investments you guys put into there. Another thing about it is you can mix and match these paradigms because in the end, they're all going to the same exact handler layer. That's exciting as well. So you can write your app partially in MVU, partially in MVVM, whatever thing comes next, and it'll just work. That's so much fun. That's what's really exciting. Now, I went into this library because I was asked about Skia. I mean, I was asked about Figma controls. So there is a repo that we're working on. Um, called, it's was public. It was made not public. It will be made public again. They're working through all of the open source stuff that we have to deal with. Um, so actually, you're asking about pointer down style of a button. Great, great thing. Great things to ask about. So a lot of these things in the states, things are going to work differently based on where they're running. Um, so. As far as, um, so let's look at Comet and what we have in Skia. So I have some handlers in here. And let's first start by looking at these fluent, like I have these fluent ones. You'll notice these fluent ones have this handler.designer. Dot .designer, dot guys. This code is 100% generated. Let me make sure this thing runs really quick. Let me, I didn't try running this because I wasn't planning on showing it. So. Let me just make sure I have the Fluent stuff enabled. I No, no, I do. I think the Fluent ones are enabled. We'll find out really quick. Oh, I even have this the style applied. All right. So this code, if we go back to this, was 100% generated from Figma. I was actually did this live on stream a couple weeks ago. Maybe it's been like three weeks ago. I don't remember. I was working on this live on stream. Now, if this runs, which I hope it will, um, and will we have composable lower level components similar to Flutter widgets? Um, that is all stuff that we're still designing. Um, I don't know if we've decided on that. We should be able to. Right now in, in Comet, the radio button is a composite control made of widgets. So there should be no reason that we can't continue doing things like that. There's lots of things that we've done in Comet that is moving into, oh, huh, it's on the one that's on the other screen. I'm like, why isn't it launching? So yes, we should be able to. All right. Um, so let's look at this. And that is working. So this code, um, is this the right one? I don't know. That's not the right one. Let me just verify. I'm going to put a breakpoint in here and see if this drawing code is ever called. Which one is that? That is progress. OK, it's being called. Check this out. Now, this code, you'll notice that animation, if we look at that toggle, I did not write animation code. This is a generic thing I wrote, which doesn't tell you how to animate this stuff. All it does is when the value changes, it says, hey, toggle and this on the set state, says to, hey, animate, set the variable to true or false. That's it. Now, this code comes from Figma. This is coming from the Figma Fluent UI design spec from Microsoft, and it auto-generated this and it says, hey, for this state, for on, for off, this is the colors, and this is the location. So that circle, that handle rect, and it automatically will mix all these layers and do everything. I didn't draw any, I did not write any of this code. 100% generated from Figma, and you can just go, it's fully animated. And I did not write animation code. The only thing I said was animate the states, and it automatically figured out what states do what layers, and then animated the control. So yes, we will have animated Figma stuff. This stuff is coming, and we're working on it. All right. And you'll also notice if I, 
right now, if I was to switch to my Skia samples, the, which is the material UI, the button has all the different states. I can actually just show you that code for a button handler. This does all of that based on the states. All it has to do is it will just go and ask for the color based on the state. And this was, I wrote this drawing code. This is 100% written drawn code, but all I'm doing is drawing shapes. So it's super, super easy. And I do say, hey, draw the background radius to where I make the radius because I do the little fill, like you see if you're long pressing. And fully animated code just by saying, hey, lerp between the, the radius. Fully animated. All right. Um, and yes, we are going to be working. I see. Sorry, I'm trying to go through questions. I'm missing things. Um, yes, we're going to be working with the C Sharp team. Um, Mads is going to be helping us to make this look better. There's, I mean, there's lots of things we want to do to make this nicer. All these news and enums. We're going to make this thing nicer. This is going to get better. Mads has a tons of tons of ideas to make this better. It's going to get cleaner. All right. Any other questions I missed? So styling things like pointer down style, styles are things that we've been talking about in some of our meetings with the forum slash Maui teams because they're the ones who are working on that. We're working on something that should work for regardless. Um, I Like I said, I'm doing that in my, I showed you the state changes. As state changes by clicking, I even have hovered state in here. It does that so on a desktop you get hovered, but you won't get hovered on mobile because that doesn't make sense. So we're working on things like that. Um, how will updates work in detail? Um, so updates as far as for as far as MVU works, um, really simple. Right now, I'm trying to ditch this. I'm hoping I can ditch this. So right now, I have a thing called a binding object. It's a little bit confusing because there's a binding object in forms, but you can do this, or you can implement a new interface called I notify property red, which subclasses I notify property changed. If you have if you use this class, all you have to do is just say, hey, I've got a state, or you can just do state for a primitive. And my binding object, every time I use that, it's going to automatically update for me. I don't have to do anything as far as bindings go. I just use this class of that binding object, and it's going to automatically data bind everything in here for me. It's going to recall this function to set the text um, when this one right here, this label is going to automatically update whenever state.txt changed. It just will. So you don't have to think about data binding. It's going to re-execute this body. It's going to re-data bind the functions. It just is going to work for you, which is really, really nice. So if you use a bindable type object, it's just going to work as your data models. Done. Um, all right. Which So... Right now, MVU has actually is actually better. So the question is being asked about like Dart does things where they do builds to reduce the GC calls. The MVU stuff, um, I actually get told that Comet slash the Maui MVU is not real MVU because I cheat and I made it more performant. So what should happen is every time you change something in the state, it should set the state and it should call this build method and then diff the entire tree. That's pure MVU. You don't do that. I don't diff the tree if I don't have to. There's lots of things that I do to determine if I should have to diff the whole tree or not. And I even tell you, I'm diffing the tree. I do it in debug mode. I give you a warning. And I think we can do some like Roslyn analyzers to tell you you're doing something you shouldn't do. Right now, looking at this text method, if I was to remove this so it's not a lambda, this, oh, it's trying to hot reload and I've had breakpoints because I was deep fixing hot reload. Let me just stop right now. So right now, this text, whenever state.txt changes, I'm going to have to diff the whole tree to figure out what happened with that label. And I'm going to tell you, OK, your label is passing in um, the string. And I don't know how to create the string for you when text changes. Please switch it to a Lambda. Now I know how to update this label because I know this state.txt was used on this label. So whenever it changes, you know, just call the Lambda again. And so 
that is not going to have to recreate all these objects. We're not going to have to recreate the whole tree and diff it. So there's lots that have been done to prevent this whole diffing the tree. And so I'm going to avoid diffing the tree whenever possible. And yes, technically it's not pure MVU because of that, but I don't care. I care more about performance. So it works just like MVU. I mean, and we can turn off that diffing mode. I mean, we can put it into full diff mode every time, but so it's true MVU, but I don't want to. Uh, but yeah, so you will see these automatically update so I don't have to recreate all those objects. So, all right. Any other questions? Did I miss any? Any moderators? Did you notice I missed something? Hopefully not. All right. So like I was saying, with the MVU, it's going to enable us to... I mean, sorry, not in view. With the new Maui handler architecture, it's going to enable us to do new things simpler and easier. And do, right now, to do this prototype and this experiment with Comet, it was a lot of work because not only did I have to come up with the new syntax and I had to come up with the diffing and hot reload and all these things like that, I had to build that new cross platform UI layer. And I'm not going to have to do that anymore. Um, Flutter's MVU is very similar to what I'm doing here, and it's pretty performant, but they have some tricks that they're doing as well. Um, but Fabulous is pure MVU, and you'll notice a speed difference between Fabulous and Comet because I'm cheating. So also though, if any of you guys have been using the um, Blazor bindings, the Blazor bindings will be able to switch ahead as well. I mean, get some speed boosts ahead as well. Because right now, in order to do the Blazor bindings, they're binding to Xamarin Forms. Um, and all of that, um, sorry, getting struck by chat. All the things that that's doing is it binds to Xamarin Forms. And it has a lot of things in Xamarin Forms that it doesn't use and doesn't need. And same with Fabulous. Fabulous does the same thing. So it adds an extra weight and an extra layer. And now, the new the blazer bindings will be able to go straight to the handler layer and eliminate all the XAML, all the binding, all the things like that that Blazor doesn't need. And so it's going to be faster, a lot faster. So this enables us to let's try out new patterns. Let's come out with come out with new UI paradigms. And we can do a lot more experiments at Microsoft and try new things cheaper, faster, and easier. So we can see what type of things developers like. Well, um, you guys will be empowered to build your own UI framework without having to do everything, which is just going to make your life better. Um, is the code which parses and all this? Yes, this whole repo was linked earlier by um, Luce. It's just GitHub slash Clancy slash comment. So you have access to this. So would there be a toolbox for elements? So there's a lot of interesting things. Right now, um, there's next to no tooling around Comet or MVU. More of that will come. Right now, a lot of the stuff has been around, um, a lot of that has been around Hot Reload. That's the only tooling I've built for this. There's an extension for Visual Studio, for Windows and Mac, and also VS Code. So you can test out Comet in VS Code. That's actually what was used at Build to show off the Maui MVU stuff and all the Maui stuff at Build was it was using the Comet plugins. So you can play with some of that stuff now. Um, so yeah, if you're a XAML guy, stick with XAML. No, that's the beautiful thing about this is you can mix and match and switch and do what you like. Um, so I think you read that React docs that recreate the UI type doesn't affect the format. People, so it depends on what you're doing, um, whether or not recreating the UI and diffing it is a performance hit. What device are you running on? Are you running on a brand new iPhone? Guess what? You can do what you want. Those things are fast. They're faster than most people's computers anymore. Are you targeting markets that have older Android devices? Yeah, it's going to matter, that diffing. Things like that really start to matter. And some of my prototypes, when I'm doing stuff and I'm doing it on iOS and the simulator and on my brand new iPhone, I'm like, this thing is amazing. I now run my prototypes on some of my old Androids sitting in my closet, and I want to cry because I'm like, ah, I see the delay. I see a black screen. I see a hang. So it depends on what you're targeting. Now, which performance, which um, paradigms would be more performant? 
You could write either one to be the most performant. Depends on what you're doing and how you're doing things. There's lots of things I've done in Comet to make it more performant. The handler architecture is more performant in Comet. But guess what? Maui um, is getting that. And so Forms is getting that. So that new architecture is going to be more performant on all of them, which is really exciting. So they're all going to have the same performance layout and render layer. Now, what they do under the hood, there are going to be some differences. Um, I think Comet, of course, I'm going to say Comet's going to be the fastest because I'm going to make sure of that, right? Um, but it depends on what you're doing and how you're architecting your app because there's things you can do to make any app non-performant. And I'm trying to remove as many of those as possible from Comet so you don't make those mistakes. But in the end, like I said, if you're doing, um, if you're passing this stuff in wrong, it's going to be not performant because it's going to have to diff, but it's going to yell at you and it's going to tell you, please don't do this. This is not smart. And eventually I, I might make those be like really big, crazy warnings yelling at you not to do that. And so there's things that I can do and detect so you don't make those mistakes. And I'm going to do as many of those as possible. I'm also looking, um, yes, performance boost is going to happen to Xamarin code as well. Everyone's getting performance boosts with Maui. The new architecture is faster. And so everyone is getting performance boost. Everyone's getting a startup boost. So everyone's getting those boosts across the board. Everyone's getting those. I'm running out of time, um, but everyone will get those boosts, I promise. It's awesome. We're setting up performance tests. So we'll be able to show you those metrics as we work on it, and it's going to get better. Um, I was explaining something and I totally forgot what trail I was working on. Um, is XAML support with MVU? No. XAML and MVU are very different. They behave differently. I don't know how that would even work or what benefit you would get from that. So you can mix and match and put a MVU control inside of XAML or a XAML control inside of MVU, but past that, no. Like, I don't know. Um, oh, right. Code generators. So I'm working on deal. I'm learning code generators and I'm working with code generators. I think that there's a lot of things I can do because these build methods are going to be your biggest performance hit. If you're doing lots of things that do things like this to where I'm saying, hey, what control should be here? And I switch these in and out and I have to do bigger bigger diffs. Um, though the bigger this control gets, and the more you have in here, the more it has to parse for these diffs. With code generators, we can break this up into smaller controls for you. So it's like, oh, you know what? You're going to switch between two different controls here. Let's just nest this in a new, um, new view body. And now we can put this here. So if this thing ever toggles, guess what? All we have to do is... I don't know why it's yelling at me. My code looks good to me. I don't know. That looks good to me. Either way. Oh, equals. That's better. All right. So now we can generate this code for you. So we're like, oh, so now if Canada ever changes, I'm just going to move it between here. So now I don't have to diff the whole tree. I can just diff this one thing. So there's lots of things like that that we're going to be working at. Um, as far as targeting web is the question in the chat, something we want to do, something we're looking forward to, something we're gathering feedback on. Um, so inside of Comet, there's a Blazor. Um, there's a Blazor back at our front end. Front end, back end, I don't know what you call it. Whichever end, there's a Blazor version. So we've been toying with those things. And that's something we want to look at. So, all right, we are down to five minutes. Is there any question? Um, any more questions? Like I said, the idea is with these code generators, we can do things like this, which this will be an instant performance gain. And we can do things like that. So that way, even if you write bad code, we can fix some of it for you. So I'm really excited for code generators. There's gonna be lots of fun things with those. And I think by code generators, I can hopefully get rid of having to write this ugly code. So you could do things similar to what people are doing with, I can't remember the name of that, um, Fadi? Is that how you say it? Fudi, Fadi? I don't know. However you say that thing where you do the I notify property change things. So um, I even have a branch of Comet that does that using code generators. So you don't even need an external thing to do all of that rewriting of IL. It just does it at build time. So it doesn't even need to do IL. All right. Um, 
What am I most happy about this? I'm most happy that it enables new UI paradigms. Um, MVU with C Sharp um, hot reload is so fast. Right now, the current hot reloads in Comet are few milliseconds. It's definitely, I think they're under 10 milliseconds for doing a full hot reload as I'm typing. And it's so fast that I don't wait for save. I just do it as you type. And if I can't, if I can't show something on screen, I just keep with the old version, which is pretty nice. It's where I have a debounce in there. So it waits like, I can't remember how many milliseconds. It waits X number of milliseconds before hot reloading, but it's instant. So you see your changes happening as you type. And so enabling that type of experience without having to build an entire new cross-platform UI layer is exciting because that now opens us up for further experimentations going forward. That future-proofing of cross-platform UI frameworks is really exciting because we have this Blazor native experience that we're talking with the Blazor bindings. There's going to be more things in an, that we want to build and we want to try out. So I'm excited that we can sh try out more things faster and um, it future proofs, like I said, because the, the Telerix and all of the people who are building all these UI controls don't have to build it over again for whatever new UI paradigm comes along. We can easily just do those. So that's what I'm really excited about is that future proofing. All right, two minutes. Two minutes, guys. Any more questions? All right, I'm going to do the slide. I said I wasn't going to do it, but I'm doing a slide. Here is my stuff. Um, I've been bad about Twitch streaming lately, and I'm going to do better. But GitHub slash Clancy, Twitter, JT Clancy, um, really easy to get a hold of. Really ask me questions. I have a Discord channel inside the repo for Comet. You'll see a Discord. I should put that elsewhere. You can join my Discord, ask me questions. I am pretty available. So. Um, anytime you want to know, let me know. And yeah, you can mix and match these things. That's what we're enabling. As far as the toolbox for elements, right now, there's tooling we want to build. Some of that could be dragging and dropping. I really like SwiftUI tooling. I'd like to build some of the stuff that they have. Um, there are no slides, guys. This is my only slide. So I can upload this, but go to my GitHub. It has all that information as well. Hopefully, it's pretty easy to remember. I have at Clancy on the little right there to help with that. Really easy to find.